Hello guys, I'm Alex and today we're gonna talk about NPM. NPM stands for Node Package Manager and uh, like the name itself says, is the actual package manager that lets you install uh, dependencies for your Node.js projects. But it's even more than that. It's basically like a repository for uh, JavaScript code and uh, other similar code that lets developers share, uh, for example, uh, third party components that solve common problems like you have uh, packages like uh, for authentication you have packages for many other purposes packages for uh, anything that comes to your mind because you know there's only 500,000 almost building blocks that you can use so npm uh, lets you install in your uh, node project any type of JavaScript code. And this, uh, in general, the JavaScript code shared on NPM is completely open source. We're going to look later at an example of uh, a node package. So how do we install node package manager? If you open the website, it is npmjs.com. What you can do is go to the documentation, click on installing node.js and updating NPM. In the previous lecture, Stefano showed you how to do that. Uh, you will get automatically in npm. So I have it installed already on my machine and I've opened a, a Linux shell and I'm inside my project folder. So let's look at together and I put this on the side. Maybe let's make this bigger. Let's look together at what's in this folder. We just have a server.js file. And if you want to see what's inside, I'm gonna show you that here. There's only uh, a very small file that does nothing else than bootstrapping a server. Uh, listen to our request that's waiting for our request so it's able to serve HTML pages in the browser. Uh, the first line of code is actually declaring a constant. This is an ES6 feature and uh, I'm declaring a constant named HTTP and I'm requiring HTTP. We'll talk about require later and you'll see what this means. Then I'm declaring another constant that is the port where I want to listen to and I have an underscore uh, constant that is requiring lodash, which is like a smaller version of underscore JS if you ever saw that. And all this code is just to make sure that our server works and replies correctly. So that's it, yeah? So if we want to start this uh, piece of code, we just need to write down a node space server.js, which is the file name. And when I enter, I'm gonna get an error. And the error I get is cannot find module lodash. So the required keyword that you saw earlier on is actually requiring a package that is supposed to be installed in the project folder or globally. And generally speaking, this package is coming from node, from the node package manager. So if we want to prepare our project in order to work with NPM, we can, after installing NPM, of course, we can write down npm space init. And what this command does, it will basically create for us a project file. The program will ask us a few questions and it will propose already some of the replies but using defaults. So for example, the package name, let's assume this is lesson three. It's taking that from the folder. That's fine by me. Version is 1.0, okay. Description, whatever, whatever, literally. The entry point is the actual uh, uh, server.js, is the file we want to launch. And test command, we don't care about it. And git repository, there's no git repository right now. Keywords, we don't mind. Offer, we don't mind. License, we don't mind. All of those stuff uh, need to be populated in case you want to release the package we are gonna write on the npm repository. So what happens is that a package.json file gets generated for us and it has inside all the data that we wanted to have. So we have the name that corresponds to lesson three, etc. So is this okay? Absolutely yes. So if we look again, let me clear this. If we look again at what we have in the folder, we now have server.js and package.json, right? Let's try to start again the server. Do you think it will work? Probably not. We will have again the same error. But now that we have a package.json, we can install packages in our projects, packages that we want to use in the project. For example, we have decided that we want to use Lodash. So what we can do is to run npm install 
space minus minus save and this dash dash save is actually dash dash save means that we want to install this uh, package the package that I'm going to specify as a production dependency so if our project is ready for production when we do dash dash save we're talking about production dependencies if I want to save only for development like for example I'm I might be installing a testing framework I can use dash dash save dash dev or I can do simply dash capital D all right and starting npm version 5 we no longer need to do that uh, to specify dash dash save because if we do an installation like this and my version is actually npm 5 look at this eh? this is 530 so when I do npm install let's start from that just to re explain better what I mean npm install lodash will, will kick off the installation for the lodash package and when this process completes our package JSON is gonna have a dependency and as you can see here, it's automatically been added. There's a dependency, and when you see something like dependencies and not dev dependencies, this is a production dependency. So I haven't specified dash dash save, but it's automatically added as a production dependency. That's from version five. If I did that before version five, it wouldn't have saved the package. It would have worked locally, but when you push that to a repository, the dependency will not have been inside the file. So keep that in mind. Let's go back. And the other thing we can notice is that there's a, there's a new folder named node modules and inside node modules we have lodash and inside lodash we have lots of files it's the entire lodash uh, framework right that's great so let's go back once again and i'm not gonna run the code yet but i'm gonna remove the node modules i'm gonna run npm install lodash dash d i want it to be a development dependency let's take a look again at the packet json packet json has a dev dependency you see the dependency is now empty we have dev dependencies lodash so this dependency will be installed only and exclusively in our dev environment so far so good yeah if we try to start the uh, the node, the server JS, we can type node server, we don't need to specify the extension. The extension, we don't need to specify, we don't need to specify the extension. We can see that now the, the our code is running correctly and uh, the server is listening on 3000. And if I open my browser and then go on localhost 3000, I get this hello Node.js server. So that's great. So far we have seen how to run npm init, how to do npm install for production, how to install a package for development. The other thing I want to show you is that if I remove the node modules folder, so I'm getting the end of Lodash altogether. The third one is always the best one. So I no longer have the Lodash dependency installed, but it's still in my package JSON. So if you specify a list of dependency in your package JSON, you can just type npm install in, the, in your folder, assuming you have your package JSON. And what will happen is that npm will read the package JSON content and will install all the dependencies in your project. So you see that even if I didn't specify to install Lodash. The package has been installed anyways and has been installed as a development dependency. So I can again run node server and it's working perfectly fine. That's pretty much it as a one on one for uh, node, but I want to show you one last thing, even it's been uh, 10 minutes so far. Last thing is that we can search for packages in on the npm uh, side and we can search for lodash you know the one that we just installed lodash we found just 1600 packages that's fine but i'm gonna pick the fourth one and as you can see we can type npm i i is just a shortener for install minus dash dash save lodash which is pretty much what i did 
If I wanted to install a package globally, because you can install it globally, there are some packages uh, that give you command line tools like Webpack. Uh, and if you want to install something like Webpack, you have to use a dash G command. So feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any question. I hope that the tutorial was clear enough. Start playing around with NPM. You're gonna use it more uh, throughout the course. You're gonna use it you're going to use it more as long as you keep writing your Node.js applications and keep in mind that if you want to keep in mind that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you have 500,000 packages to pick from, find the one that suits your needs and maybe start building from there. I hope you liked this third lecture. Uh, please le let us know in the comments, uh, leave a like, share that with your peers and uh, Let's see you at the next lesson.